All right, so now in this module, I want to look, take a closer look at fracture surfaces. So this is something that you might do if you're trying to do an analysis of a failed part. You might look at the surfaces to see if you can glean any um, uh, identification of how it failed. So that's what we're going to look at right here. And the uh, first thing we want to look at the fracture surface has to do with whether the fracture passes through the grain or around the grain. And so the first thing we're going to talk about is when fracture passes through the grains. And this is known as transgranular or cleavage fracture. So and, uh, here you can see you know, just a micrograph showing the grain structure. And the red line here is the path of the crack propagation, so where it failed. So basically, this is the splitting line. So this is one new uh, surface, and this is one new part up here. That's where the bonds broke. And when you look at this, you'll have an appearance kind of like, uh, you know, like you see here uh, for uh, transgranular. So the bonds break along particular crystallographic planes um, such that the orientation um, changes with um, grain orientation. So it, it's basically relatively smooth across uh, a number of parts. So that's one type. Um, and this again, this is uh, from a polycrystalline material where you see uh, where you see this. You can also have it um, uh, the opposite occur, intergranular fracture. This is when it uh, occurs along or through grain boundaries, right? So here you can see the same kind of general microstructure, but here the red line, which is the path of crack propagation, is basically along the grain boundaries. So it doesn't go through the grains, so it's intergranular. And so here, when you look at this, the result of these new surfaces, and this is what you can see here, you see that uh, it's a very smooth uh, surface, and you see basically what looks like grains. So, you know, you're basically looking at the surface of the grain. And so you can see that kind of shape and it's going to follow that that structure. Uh, so it follows the grain structure. So that's a little bit different than here where it's a little bit rougher. The, the actual surface is rougher and it doesn't necessarily follow grain boundary. So it's more, it still has some uh, a texture to it, but it's not following the grain structure as much as it's following the the uh, kind of path of uh, crack propagation. So there's some more texture on the surface as well. So that's kind of the, the, the main difference. And so you can see the grain structure and you can kind of see the 3D nature, which is why SEM is good because of that depth of field. We can see this type. Uh, and again, this is a type of brittle fracture that occurs. All right, so let's look at some other uh, kind of fracture surfaces and what we can get out of them. So this is a um, uh, test sample. Uh, I believe this is from uh, a uh, impact uh, sample, which we'll talk about later. But in essence, uh, you can kind of see these, these lines and patterns on the sample. And this actually can be used to determine where crack initiation comes from. So here, all these kind of lines, if you can kind of follow them back, kind of lead to this point. And it's a little bit more clear here because all of these lines, we call them chevron marks um, or river marks sometimes. You can see all of these chevron markings kind of point back to a single point here. So basically it's here or right here on this surface. And so chevron markings can tell you where crack initiation occurs, and that's important, right? We can kind of identify it back to a feature um, on the surface or at this notch that we see. And so that's helpful for determining um, the initiation and maybe what caused it in your kind of postmortem analysis. We can do the same thing with glass. So with amorphous materials like uh, inorganic glasses we've talked about before, um, or polymeric glasses, um, those fracture surfaces tend to have a very unique fracture. So it's still going to be perpendicular and relatively smooth, but what we see in these amorphous materials um, is a series of different regions. So we still sort of see markings, like here, that point back to a single point here. That's the source of failure, just like we see here in the real image. This is the origin on the surface. But then we see this kind of um, uh, smooth region 
This is known as the mirror region. It's where the crack initiation initially accelerates. So that's uh, so it's basically smooth in that region because it's accelerating up. Um, and then uh, you get to a certain point where it stops being as smooth, and we call that the mist region because it kind of looks like mist and kind of spots, and it looks a little hazy. And so that's where uh, it begins to roughen because it stopped accelerating and you reach a critical velocity of the acceleration because it's brittle fracture and so it happens really quickly and so that's where you've basically reached that acceleration and so it becomes uh, more roughened and then a little outside of that you start to see the hackle region uh, and this is the even rougher and then this is where you start to see those striations which point back to the initiation so this can be quite large and you can actually see quite a bit of the striation here so that's the hackle region it's even rougher and it has those striations leading back or radiating away from the crack and so that kind of initially points you back to where the source of the failure may have been so that's kind of in amorphous glass materials so no grain structure so not like the inner versus transgranular Another phenomenon um, called crazing, uh, this is something that happens in a lot of thermoplastic polymers. So we're going to talk about polymers uh, here in the, in the next chapter, uh, but for now, uh, I just kind of want to point you to the, the fracture that can occur. So again, it's, cr it's crazing, and basically what happens is with this polymer, you have a linear kind of strand uh, um, structure so that you have all of these chains of polymers and they're all aligned in the vertical direction and so when it's being extended and you see that it's trying to open up this region you start to see those voids occur and they occur kind of between as individual strands are breaking so the uh, bridges of these fibers are, are breaking in those portions and connected elsewhere um, and so then eventually, at some point, these are all going to kind of connect up. It's going to have this sort of jagged tooth phenomenon. Uh, and that kind of shows you the uh, fiber structure. So you have all these fiber bridges between. And so that's what we see with crazing. And again, it's going to come with thermoplastic polymers, which we'll talk about more. Uh, but it's still from the plastic deformation of those materials. It's just a little bit different mechanism than what we see in metals because of the molecular structure, the long molecules of polymers that we see. And the interesting thing here is that when these voids are occurring, we can still support a load in between. So again, it's one of those things that uh, makes uh, polymers unique in that you know, we still have the start of failure occurring, but it's able to withstand a certain load. And so that's going to give it resistance to failure and what we term fracture toughness here in a bit.